Welcome to Premier Point Solutions, how to set up forms-based authentication or FBA in SharePoint 2016. This is part one of a four-part series. In part one, we will configure the web app, configure the settings, use the default sign-in page after enabling FBA, and then take a look at how that changes the look and feel of our site. We will start off by going to our central administration and going to manage web applications. From there we'll want to create a new application. We still we have about three of them already out there. Now as our create new application site has come up we're actually going to go in and in this particular case we're going to name this FBA and we'll make that port 80 and we're going to put a host header of FBA and we'll see that changes made through our path here as we scroll down we can leave anonymous access uh, at no uh, use secure sockets no uh, we want to enable Windows authentication and then we're going to come down here to enable forms based authentication in our particular case, we're going to put in FBA, and for our row, we're going to do FBA row. Now, we'll come back to this later in our video three, where we'll use uh, the membership provider name and role manager name within our web config file. Let's scroll on down. We're good here. We're going to use our default sign-in page at this time, and of course, we see that our URL is the FBA. We keep going. Uh, our application pool, in this particular case, we'll keep it the same name that we have. We're using a, a um, um, application pool that we already have in place. Another one that's already set up. As we go in, uh, our database server, we have that set up already. We're going to go and change our database name to just FBA. Again, we'll scroll down. Windows Authentication. Everything else we'll leave blank here and we're going to click OK. And again, it's continuing to create the web application. Now we see that our web application has been complete. Uh, before we actually log out to the site, let's go ahead and create a site collection so we have some content. So we'll click Create Site Collection. This particular case, we're just going to call this Home. We don't need a description. Uh, we're going to leave it at FBA. This will be our root site. And as we scroll down, we'll just leave this as a team blog, or excuse me, team site. And then let's set up the administrator. set up a primary. We don't have to worry about a secondary on this. We'll scroll down. Uh, we don't need to use a template, so we're going to click OK. And again, it'll create the site collection. So now we see that our new web application has been created. We actually have a site that we can log to, but one thing we want to do first is we want to go ahead and go out to our C drive, Windows, System32, Drivers, etc., and go to our host uh, because we did create a host header here. In this particular case, we'll need to add that. So let's go ahead and put in our IP address. We'll tab over and we're going to put FBA. We'll save. Okay, now let's go ahead and try to log out to our site. So now we see that we have the default sign in page that will show up. Of course, we don't have any forms based authentication users yet, so let's go ahead and log in as, a, as Windows authentication.
So we see now that our site has come up, our home site, logged in as administrator, and we can also see up in our URL that this is the FBA site that we created. Well that concludes part one of our four part series. In part two we will work on setting up our SQL database which we will store our forms based users in and we will assign their permissions. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again.